The vamp, she's gorgeous, ambitious, sexually appealing, and inexplicably notorious for being a conniving, quick-witted dame. A classic character type, the vamp is the beauty who uses her femininity and her sexuality as a weapon to undermine a moral and upright man for evil purposes. She's evil and sexy, a liar, a manipulatrix and a sneak. She uses the good guy's sympathy against him, often with a sob story about her mother and some hospital bills or a wounded gazelle gambit. Unlike the femme fatale and even the dark feminine, she is rotten to the core and will never be swayed from the path of darkness by love. Although the name is derived from vampire, this character is most commonly a normal human, but some supernatural entities are known to influence men in this way. Succubi and sirens are known to lure men in to be eaten or drained of life energy, or occasional literal vampires use their supernatural beauty and wit to lure male prey to their deaths. The female vampire, as an unnatural, predatory monster, was a trope developed in the late 19th and early 20th century. She represented the fears of a patriarchal culture, inhabited by both men and women, who believed the new woman was a very real threat to the very fiber of virtuous and well-functioning society. This vamp clawed her way into the mass consciousness in the years before all women in the US and UK got the vote. At this key point of culture change, it is no wonder that the women behind it were figuratively, and sometimes literally, equated with monsters. The first reference to this type of vamp is in the 1897 poem, The Vampire, by Rudyard Kipling. A fool he was, and he made his prayer, even as you or I, to a rag and a bone and a hank of hair, we called her the woman who did not care, but the fool, he called her his lady fair, even as you or I. Oh, the years we waste, and the tears we waste, and the work of our head and hand belong to the woman who did not know, and now we know she could never know, and did not understand. A fool there was, and his goods he spent, even as you or I, Honour and faith and a sure intent, and it wasn't the least what the lady meant, but a fool must follow his natural bent, even as you or I. Oh, the toil we lost, and the spoil we lost, and the excellent things we planned belonged to the woman who didn't know why, and now we know that she never knew why, and did not understand. The fool was stripped to his foolish hide, even as you or I, which he might have seen when she threw him aside, but it isn't on record the lady tried. So some of him lived, but most of him died, even as you or I. And it isn't the shame, and it isn't the blame that stings like a white-hot brand. It's the cunning to know that she never knew why, seeing at last she could never know why. I never could understand. Suffice to say, old Rudy had some issues. He never used the word vampire except in the title. But his portrayal of what moderns might think of as a gold digger used the imagery of a soul-sucking, insatiable monster to great effect. Vamps were meant to be predatory, insatiable women who could not be trusted with men's virtue or even their physical health. Certainly, they weren't wife and mother material. The predatory nature of vamps was too pronged. The vamp was a gold digger and home wrecker who ruined good men. Conversely, she was an unnatural, deviant type of female who might prey upon and destroy otherwise innocent and virtuous young girls. In this way, the vamp as a tool of patriarchy was deployed to attack the many feminist leaders who whether due to actual sexual identity or simple practicality, eschewed traditional marriage and created various sorts of partnerships with one another other women. Marilyn Monroe is a slightly retro but still valid version as well as Anna Nicole Smith. 
A kiss on the hand may be quite continental, but diamonds are a girl's best friend. A kiss may be grand, but won't pay the rental on your humble flat or help you at the auto map. Their common, tragic ending suggests that this patriarchy endorsed version of Vamp may not be as enviable as she first appears. The vamp's greatest weapon is her sexuality. She embodies society's view of women who embrace sex as a threat to the established order, and the fear around her rests on the sense that there's something inherently emasculating about a sexually empowered woman. Vamps have always been women who go against the expectations of what women are meant to be. They are sexual, not virginal, manipulative, not doting, and powerful, not subservient. Ultimately, they are a manifestation of this particularly male fear that women will emasculate, castrate, and upend the patriarchal order. So the reason the trope survives and evolves is that this fear has never really gone away, it may even be more prevalent than ever.